Well, like Marta was saying, I work in urbanism. I was in the architecture university and I'm working in a, a territorial organization in Republica University in Uruguay. Until last year, I was working as a president of the architects of Uruguay. And the work I'm going to show you today is uh, since I'm the director of the Sustainable Territory Council and Session in the government of Canelones in Uruguay as well. If you've been in Uruguay, um, it's uh, near the airport where you would land in our country. And I think this is a great example because then I will mention the Society of Architects to speak about how we're talking about this workshop where we highlight uh, how important participation is because we have the, our pilot project and how this allows us to move forward in this way of uh, building cities from the citizen participation. 18 years ago, uh, it's when I started working in the public uh, department, designing uh, plans of uh, territories, urban development, cities development, public spaces. But in through all this experience of tactical urbanism, it's a, it's like a real participation. It's a specific and straightforward participation. But at the same time, this uh, methodology of tactic urbanism allows in the short term, it allows to have interventions that are short term interventions, low cost, and we can work with the social civil society so they can really participate. This also allows to create a project or several projects, but they are specific projects. We will see some examples now. So they are seen from an empirical approach, from a real point of view of cohabitation of societies. From So it has to be technical, but also it needs to pay attention to the different social stakeholders to show and give simple solutions that will allow us to face this complex reality, like the one we see right now, but also finding solutions, solutions that are that can be modified so we can try a solution, we can test it, we assess it, and then if it works, fantastic, but then if we have to change something, that can happen. So it's just to have that action made concrete. So these characteristics allow us to work in the territory. So this is the pilot project. It's called Tukaya, which would mean your street. So it's a very specific project. Uh, so you just you can have the idea. You can see the department. This area of Canelones is uh, near Montevideo. You can see it here. And within this department, that's divided in eight micro regions. We chose a specific sector, specific area. In this, this area is a bit particular because in 2005, uh, we had a new plan of the territorial organization in the coast. And from this moment, all the projects were triggered as well as other plans that became more concrete, that actually took shape. So the plan of territorial organization moved forward along with uh, another plan for infrastructures. And this was about um, sanitizing waters, streets, and all the water switches. So this creates that there's uh, uh, better streets or better pavement, but maybe not necessarily in the moment when we had uh, funds. So we give priority to streets to solve their fundamental problems. And now we get other problems that now we think it's important to face them. 
So we chose a sector where the project, the infrastructure project had already started with all sanitation, water sewages. And here, some topics arise that have to do with uh, sustainable mobility. So this allowed to, sorry, excuse me just a minute. So it's about innovative ways, thinking about this uh, participative uh, citizen participation. So this methodology of tactical urbanism, this project we've been developing with uh, the local government, the department government, the town, but also with uh, another project and a program for the United Nation of the United Nation for Development. And then in the end, we've got this uh, mothership project. This project has four stages, the diagnosis, code design, execution and assessment. And what I always like to highlight, and Marta, I think you too, it's um, how we can make a systematic this, uh, this project so we can elaborate it in a careful way in order to have an effective participa participation in all the stages. So from the moment of the diagnosis, we think about the solutions and then we execute them all together with the neighbors, with social organizations, with uh, educational institutions. And once this is done, then we assess it all together as well. So it is a great challenge because many times we're thinking, okay, I've got my law for territorial organization in Uruguay, which foresees this uh, participation in a clear way. They have to do with public audiences, etc. But to what extent do people get involved? And to what extent do those ideas get uh, taken into account? This is for you to have an idea more or less of the whole pilot project. And I think it's quite interesting. You can see it throughout the time. So we talk to the neighbors, the social organizations, we invite to, uh, we invite them to talk, to have workshops, but then we need specific actions like this one, for example, six months. Uh, in these six months, we had 14 participative instances. We worked in the territory more than 200 people participated, surveys were made, and this is how we see 668 square meters painted. This is not even the objective, so we thought that was, this was funny because you could see that. Now we will see um, a video because it's going to show you. Try to understand the dynamic of this territory who will be the ones that are really participating. So here you see some groups, one of the groups, for example, uh, people who are skating, people who are cycling, children at school. So how do we get to those people? How can we move forward to have cities that are friendlier with these type of groups? citizens which is easier to walk so they're focusing on the people and then they're trying to kind of balance the role of the vehicle out with uh, the design and the infrastructure in the infrastructures in this city so first of all we have to identify the challenges we have prioritize them with the, the neighborhoods institutions and um, stakeholders 
And after that, this is very important as well for our pilot of tactical urbanism, which is define the focus area. So the idea is that then this can scale to other parts of the city or even to other cities. But the pilot project is very specific. It's concrete, as I showed you. Uh, this was about 15 apple territories, some avenues, some street streams, a square that would be at the core of this project, a public space. So we can start working with this. At the same time, we're using technology so we can measure parts of the city, we can count the people, we can count the vehicles, we can coordinate with the departmental government. This is also, that's very important and it's something that we really value. So these are cross-cutting projects. These are projects that you'll see they have a trend for governments to work together so we can have planning area, transport area, gender area, young yeah, youth area, environmental area. So even if this seems obvious, it's really not. Because many times we get projects that are sector projects and they are solved in their own fields or for of the ones I just mentioned. So the, the point here is to work together until even the execution, because we didn't have a budget here. So obviously this, uh, we, we need a coordination with all the directions to, for example, uh, put uh, signs for the cycling paths. There was a part for culture and animation, working in the workshops, dynamics. So this is this is what I also thought would be very important. That is the different parts of the government. In this project, we have the town participating, the department government, but also international organisms and all the organisms like the MOVAS projects that at that very moment they were doing the guide for urban mobility in the whole country. So this is also very interesting because the goal is not just the project itself, but to reply it. Well, in this first gathering about causes identified and problems that we see the difficulty to for mobility bicycles uh, etc means that almost half percent sorry 50 percent is about this precisely 16 percent for uh, said public spaces and streets not adapted for universal accessibility and always with the idea of creating public spaces I have a friend in Barcelona who says, Natalia, you are moving forward towards universal accessibility, but we've got it and it's not perceptible even. How do we achieve this? How do we make integration real? Not just a poster, oh, you can go here, you can't go there. How do we integrate all of it? And safety came up along a lot this topic how to use public spaces what bicycles and cycling lanes should be like how to walk around the city all of this and i'll later show a picture about this allowed us to think about topics like a very diff uh, very, very dangerous crossroads. And pilots can solve this with the characteristics that I was mentioning in a very straightforward way. But not because of this can we say it has been thoroughly analyzed in terms of behavior. So in co-design as a stage, 
we carried out different collective uh, workshops and we decided to create a proposal altogether that uh, allowed the participants themselves to prioritize within all the topics, conflicts and things that had come up in workshops to prioritize which were the most important ones. We had six gatherings, six participatory gatherings, and they were all focused on co-design. Some were led by social organizations or associations taking their place, but especially the on site, we thought that this was very interesting. So what we see here has a lot to do in this case with the hiring of a consultancy office, the specialty of which was participation and a dynamic to register to record. Sorry, all of this, because later, if not, if we don't do this, it's very difficult to assess. As you can see there, we finished in the midst of the pandemic. We finished after the pandemic, thankfully. But uh, yeah, we always work in different dynamics with, uh, I mean, you can see it here. We met in a huge uh, club and we created different possibilities to think about ideas and how to navigate them in our territory. This is a triangle as that you can see here that we chose to basically set limits our tactical urbanism plan. We decided to use all the tools at our disposal so that everyone felt free to express themselves in the way they want with air shots, with different pictures, edits, and also with the materials so that they could shape their proposals. We just wanted everyone to express themselves as they wish. Then we went to the square itself. What did we do there? Well, with the youth especially, we decided to work with big groups of skaters, things like that. This square is at the heart of this project. It's got a skating area as well as an area for little children and a playing area. So that's where we did the workshop. I remember that back then I said, in the swimming pool, come on, kids, come participate. And they did with their roller skates and their helmets. So these are tactics to make them answer the questions. How do you feel in this street? Do you like to skate here? How do you walk about this area, for instance? It was beautiful. Can you see them, the youth with their helmets and roller skates? because they were skeptical at the start. We wanted solutions for their neighborhood, their city, their town, their street. This was another gathering that we had with the schools. There's a school around this area and uh, we told them we're going to have a workshop in the school itself talking about sustainable urban mobility. We first asked them, what does mobility mean and urban and sustainable? And it's amazing how much children know and how much learn, children learn and convey. We think that it's key that they lived these experiences. And then we opened up the street, so to speak. We actually closed it. Uh, but we opened it up for children. So we had a whole afternoon with traffic inspectors who cut the street and we told children, hey, come with your bikes, whatever you want. And their first impression was that, well, they only used the sidewalk, but we told them, hey, you've got the whole street, do as you wish. And they later, started asking questions. How can we cross the street? What can we do here and there? How can we improve our way from our, the path from the square to school so that we can be safe? 
Do you see the pictures? They came, they tried, they experimented, they worked together to design a plan. But in the street itself, that was later going to be modified and adapted. We made the most of the workshop of the traf traffic department. Uh, they had a workshop about safety and uh, we asked our staff to bring different elements corresponding to the different ways of moving around a territory. Then we had with the city council technicians a workshop to start putting the pieces together. How can we blend different points of view? And amazing things happen because they normally don't work together. Engineers, architects, urban planners, they normally work in different spaces. That's how we started to consolidate the project, something that was very interesting and that has a lot to do with prototypes was, well, from these workshops onwards, we had defined a series of changes to make, to adapt this corner here. We wanted to basically change the flow and use the street in a different way. So we started to plant different trees. We decided what would be accessible to vehicles and what wouldn't. What crossroads were defined, shared streets, things like that. Places for vehicles and bikes to share spaces, places where they would be separate, places where bicycles would be the priority. So basically, we define different solutions according to the different problems identified in the city. What we did there was to paint the street according to a prototype that in a way would summarize what the children wanted, what the children found most interesting about their city, which had, which had a lot with green spaces, the sea, the red roofs of our homes and sand. And taking all of this into account, we created a design on which to work. We prioritized, and if you look at this triangle, this corner, because it had most problems in the diagnosis stage. We created cycling lanes at both sides. This is the public space with the square. As you can see, we defined paths that were a bit friendlier and accessible for people to cross from one space to the other. This triangle here is very important because it was very dangerous for the vehicles coming this way. So it's basically a way of making our street safer by making cars have to slow down before they get to the crossroads. This is the shared street, and that's where we created some lanes only for people to walk on. Once we had defined the project, we started defining its execution, its implementation. We had uh, several gatherings with children, with the neighbors, with schools and the youth, but at the same time with the teams, the technicians of the department, since we had to not only work on this uh, corner itself, but look at the, f I think it was uh, five neighborhoods or five streets. Uh, as I was saying, as you can see here, we were all working together. We created this lane for access. Then we made this a one-way street for the for cars. Then we created a lane for roller um, for skaters, sorry. And uh, as you can see here, we started planting these trees and plants and 
apart from painting apart from paint we also established different elements that would guarantee safety and all of a sudden this area here was no longer accessible to cars we needed the, the help of these technicians for the painting and, and everything but later we actually counted on the help of our children as you can see there was also a fair back then so we worked with them with it from their different stands basically it's all about prototypes these guys here are from the skaters collective and the bikers sorry says the speaker oh i can't remember the word yeah rollerblade so it's not important it's not only important to provide a cycling lane but to, to get them engaged in the implementation and the creation of this lane itself they were the ones painting these uh, signs on the floor and later these contributions actually were sent to the, our traffic department and this was later copied and replicated in other parts of the city this has a lot to do with something that is very important too it's about uh, the objective of the project it was inaugurated and our mayor came there our mayor as you can see her here she's a teacher so she was really involved with our our children this is the before and after but it doesn't seem as though we did much but when you're there and you see the whole process it was a truly interesting change so we got to the assessment stage was focused on leveraging on our lessons learned as i was saying it's very broad but i've tried to include some of the key metrics we worked with polls we looked at speed and we were there looking at the mobility of our people our vehicles our bikers and how their behavior changed as you can see we were assessing the perception when you walk through the crossroads of del canal avenue before the intervention we also divided this questionnaire this survey in by women and men and also the group of children since women and children are the ones that perceive the lack of safety the most they are more aware of how dangerous it, it can be to use a bike to move around certain places so you can see the the orange bar here before the intervention the perception of lack of safety was huge 64 percent of the survey respondents associated this crossroads to a lack of safety and then the light blue bars reflect the post modifications perceptions you can see here that there's a huge increase in safety happiness where be whereas before in orange we can read fear intimidation lack of safety anxiety almost stress to have to walk about this part of the city at the same time their perception of we assess their perception of the crossroads in terms of pure safety and we compared the before and after results again when you carry out projects in a city we are used to this i love measuring public spaces perceptions if after a modification or a a redesign if you inaugurate a space and the next day i see it's full of 
youth, it's full of children, the elderly, etc. That for me is the the biggest indicator that we made the right choice. To be able to systematize these metrics, to carry out surveys, to compare with the same people, the before and after, I think this legitimizes and makes the project much stronger. Yeah. I'm sorry. May I interrupt you? There were three questions for you. Before we get we get to the surveys and assessment part, could we maybe jump to the questions before we change topic? Yes, of course, no problem. I can enjoy my mate in the meantime. Well, the first one is one of my questions. My first doubt as a person involved in administration it's like my default question. I was very interested, and many might find it interesting too here since we most of us work in municipalities, but let's talk about the governance, the natural governance that you were mentioning, the department governance, the different groups. So was there any kind of process to formalize this kind of participation? Municipalities say, yeah, I would love to work with my universities with my autonomous community but was there a consortium a an agreement or a simple protocol because if things go well it's fantastic especially uh, as you were saying everything was very cross-sectional right it was a very specific project in terms of geography of location but how did you get all the different departments of the municipality involved and more so because the budget was not clear. I'll ask my next questions after this one. It's about an alignment. Sometimes it happens. There was an intention on the part of the development plan of the UN to develop in Uruguay a tactical urban planning project, which hadn't happened before. We were in a meeting and I was telling people what we were working on in my department, what we wanted to develop. And they told me, hey, Natalia, we've got this possibility to support you if you carry out a tactical urban planning project. And we were like, great. So it was only an agreement. It wasn't really formal, but it did lead to a huge commitment on our part. We replicated this in other municipalities, in fact, and not only did we see the technical support and the, we were able to work with this consultancy office, which was huge when you work on topics like this, because, I mean, we were all doing one million things at the same time. So you really needed somebody to summarize, to make things simple, I was coordinating the whole thing, but in a very cross-sectional way with uh, different departments. And the MOVES uh, project was also key. It is over now in Uruguay, but uh, for a long time, this project was about working with different department governments and our city was chosen as a pilot city to work on the sustainable mobility agenda. So, the government, the department government in Uruguay, I mean, Uruguay has 19 departments. The, we could compare it to a province if you were thinking about Spain, but each department is divided in municipalities. In, in fact, we've got 30 municipalities and we only worked with one of these. So, even our public participation workshops, they weren't open to the whole territory because if not, we would lead to many false expectations. So we started limiting things, breaking things down, maintaining the multi-stakeholder uh, aspect of it. The schools involved, for instance, that were the ones only in the impacted area. 
those who those schools that were close to that uh, square are not 10 kilometers away. We couldn't make them participate if they later weren't going to actually use the space. So, yes, there was an agreement, a specific agreement between the traffic department and uh, then with the municipality. One of the agreements was more formal than the other. En el que estabas tú ahí detrás. <risa> no, o sea, es decir, un, un corazón o alguien que realmente quiere impulsar eso y que se lleve a cabo, ¿no? Sí, sí, a ver, eh, eh, es un poco lo que le decía. El área... So, it is what I was saying. So, I'm in the direction of sustainable territories. And of course, we were the ones trying to, to change the other ones to make it happen. There's always someone who has to lead the project and talk to the institutions because this has to be done in a very responsible way. Because when you work with other people, with schools, with the neighbors, obviously the result needs to be very good. Otherwise, obviously it's not going to be perfect, but we need to realize um, if if there are some mistakes, uh, to solve it. So um, it's not just a workshop at an academic level. We can obviously give ideas. If you're working in your territory with the social organization, with the neighbors, and they, they are expecting some things. So it is important that they can they can see the different stakeholders that participate. Fantastic. Well, there's another question from SMY. I'm really sorry because I don't know who this person um, is. And they're saying something very specific. So the uh, ideation was put in the framework of established categories. Uh, by the initial diagnosis, because he saw this person saw um, the blue post-its, and that uh, created some curiosity in this person. Well, if I'm getting the question right, the reality is that in the diagnosis, everything was open to try to give uh, different alternatives, possibilities, and it wasn't put in the framework of, of what already was existing, uh, because this type of of approach could uh, could create innovation of course we could uh, innovate that um uh, the bike uh, so so not only for bikers but also for people who are skating things like this because that did not exist prior to this so obviously diagnosis is what uh, after triggered the guide or co-creation. I, I don't know if I answer the question right with this. Yes, I think so. Um, Luis, was it you? Natalia, thank you very much. I'm really enjoying your presentation. Um, yes, I have a bit of a doubt. Uh, I don't know if something happened in your project. So, for example, traffic in Madrid, traffic like it like in any other big city is very complicated so whenever you have a participative process like this when to re redesign uh traffic space uh, did you have any problems any conflicts within the different parts for example the drivers the psych the people who cycle um the pedestrians because they might want to use different things they might be focused on different things um so how do you deal with these things to find a consensus to find a solution so you improve it uh, because i think in madrid we would definitely have this if, if this were to happen well yeah so first of all this project is not well it's a, it's in an avenue in ciudad de la cruz so it's not in the main line so it's not like the traffic is uh, it's always uh, like traffic jams and everything but obviously we did have to deal with some conflicts yes it was actually quite fun i would say because i'm going to show you this here would you see here these are some houses 
And here they used to using this square and they park in this street. So we put a cycling path where they used to park. It wasn't allowed, but they used to do it all the time. So at the same time, we we kept the other part for parking. And then near the square, where you can see here, here we removed those uh, parking spaces. So yes, there were conflicts, uh, they complained. And we did some workshop with them as well to try to tell them, try to explain. Um, first of all, to understand the problem. So the problem they said is that the the stream was not good so it had nothing to do with this so they just wanted to complain about something else and the the topic is that well why they, they need a cycling path and we said okay so your children don't they cycle or if they do how they do it they say well this and that so this was one of the conflicts and the other one was with the fair because here every Sunday there's a little fair. So here, uh, four uh, slots would uh, be removed and they were the most important one because they were in the corner. So obviously this uh, is crazy when the, um, the fair was uh, taking place. So what we did is like in this part between the fair and the house, we here we could create also some space for this fair for the people who were actually in the other one. We wanted to make them understand that this uh, was a, a gathering place, an access place, and it was actually more beautiful than what they had before. But obviously conflicts will always arise. So we have to integrate them and deal with them. Apart from this, there were no bigger issues, I would say. So from all the service and all, all the talks we had, we wanted uh, more security, everything more organized. Uh, they could be calm, uh, colorful. We thought this would be interesting. More respect, more attention, more children. So actually, it's quite coherent to the diagnosis, to the first diagnosis, because they wanted all of this. So you can see the before and after regarding the traffic. And this is what we got. This was the initial one. And this is what happened afterwards. So we created this cycling path. This is for pedestrians. This is like a little square. And it's much safer than what happened before because you could see here. And when we saw it, it was everyone was there, uh, cars, um, bikes, uh, motorbikes. So this was much more coherent. And the thing is like, what's important is what comes afterwards. We measured it, we analyzed it and we wanted to find a real solution. And that's what we're doing right now because we can get a great experience, but then at some point um, we need to have these uh, big plans. The streets need to be painted. We need to have the different paths. So once we tested everything, then we consolidated as a definite solution. And from this point on, we created this uh, tactical urbanism guide. And I uh, give you here the uh, link so you can download it. So you can see the, the experience, uh, the call to Calle, your street. From this on, we had other pilot projects. Uh, for example, this one is about sustainable mobility in Ciudad del Plata. It was in the department of San Jose, where 
they were working in similar things but they were highlighting um, on schools and high schools, but they had these uh, results, as you can see, and people were actually participating uh, in it. So this is what's key, really. In just uh, some specific time, with simple solutions here, it had to do with uh, the painting, urban equipment and then consolidate everything in, uh, for example uh, with uh, the different administration trunk administration etc it could also be replicated in serious and here we participated as well and we didn't manage 100% to execute it. We've been through the diagnosis because Aureus is, is quite small uh, within Canelones. And what uh, we said is they have a, what we call a culture house where um, 600 people participate. There's children, teenagers, young adults, uh, adults. So we have uh, workshops and the people say, I'm scared because uh, I finish my music workshop and I go to the square and the traffic was terrible. Um, so there were motorbikes crossing. So now it's a, a both way street and we're going to just uh, make a one way street and apply the same rules, make the streets smaller. The pavements will be wider at a cycle path, but using the same methodology. We want to make the best, give the street the best use it could have. So here we see the neighbors, the deputies. This is the street, the, the square. So you can see how the people are crossing streets here. And the cars are, are going very fast. So we, this is what we're working on. And we are moving forward towards a project that's quite beautiful, that it unites, it pacifies, it reduces everyone's speed. And the last one I'm going to show you, we are working with the Society of Architectures in Uruguay about this tactical urbanism. This is the pavement opposite the Society of Architects. So here we started with some diagnosis where we just got some plans, as you can see them here. As in the parking spaces, so we talked to colleagues, we talked to neighbors. And what's interesting about this is that uh, it has the same four stages we started in december 22 now we are in the co-design stage we need just a bit more time because we need to go to the execution now so you can see here that's uh, the avenue that's uh, usually quite crowded so um we are managing with some of the conflicts uh, louise uh, was talking about we also have the uh, media faculty for the university the economy was uh, is quite near as well, and it gets all the way to the park. So we're working now in this co-design. And part of the things that were stated, this is one of the walks we had with the neighbors who wanted to participate. So we also included the Dep Department Government of Montevideo, the Faculty of Architecture, Faculty of Media. And the idea is to have some changes in the corner so people can cross in shorter, shorter crossings between the two faculties also paint the street to change the, the behavior kind of, to have this uh, change of culture. In Uruguay, we're having this quite a lot. 
Because active mobility is very important. How can we create a cities that are more sustainable, that where it's easier to just walk and also use, encourage public transport and not just uh, for everyone to use the public, uh, uh, their private uh, cars. One of the neighbors that participated here said, um, once a month, I would like to open my window. And that was shocking because this meant that uh, obviously life is so so fast and there's noise, there's dust. He lives in a beautiful place, but he cannot open the window. That's really shocking. So this urban project is not just uh, something that has to do with specific action. It's also something that has to do with uh, behavioral actions. So it's working with the administration for at least these once a month, these uh, could be forbidden for cars just one day. So the neighbors could open their windows. Um, we could have something in the street for that day. So I think it's a very interesting tool to develop specific projects, which are also simple, but beautiful and people will be involved in them. So this is what I wanted to, to convey, that real participation is not easy. So we need to really work on all the, on the, all the stages, the four of them. It's a, a cross-cutting job and we need to count on all the stakeholders. We need to measure, assess, and make the performance very specific. So this cannot just be just painting a street. It needs to trigger real change when planning, when managing, and when executing the different departments. Because once they see that these works, they leave it there. But if it doesn't work, then we just modify it. And here we can consolidate to encourage this change of culture and replicate it in some uh, other other places. Because we're always thinking about this public space, which is fundamental. Work in a coordinated way with administrations. We need to work smart. And this is also very important. It's not just do whatever, um, whatever, wherever. It has, we need to think about the streets, the classification. In this case, for example, uh, we have, uh, is it, I mean, road, is it just an inner road? What characteristics has it called? So this project has to do, has to bear in mind all the legislation, what type of city do we want? Because otherwise it would be just small interventions that uh, well, the neighbor would say, I just want some painting this here and I want this painting here. So, but it's not about this, is to go for this uh, project that has management and this is very important. So, so we can have everyone united and improving life quality and make everything safe and environmentally friendly, sustainable, because that is what we want. And this is our the part of the team that worked here. But uh, we've got the three parts here that are participating, the different stakeholders mainly. And this is what we are, we are testing with this urbanism. I would like to share a short video with you. Let's see if I can play it.
the Tukaye project was implemented between August and December. Sorry, can you hear it at all? No, sorry, we can't. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Se ve, pero no se escucha. So can you see it at least? You can see it, but you can't hear it. Yep, that's right. Well, we can't even see it now. When you share the video, you'll see a, a tab at the bottom left and it says share through the computer. And then you can share a sound, sorry, audio through the computer and then you can share it properly. Sorry, can you repeat the instructions to me? When you share, and you choose the tab before you press the blue tab at on the right at the same height you'll see the option to share sound oh perfect thank you see how much we learn in these workshops always we learn a lot about tactics from august to december 2021 the Tukaye project was implemented, a sustainable mobility project. Oh, I came to a normal meeting, but the experience was completely different. It was about identifying problems and opportunities together with the neighbors, the collectives, everyone, and thinking about the projects that we wanted to prioritize and how we would co-create all of it, work together, but especially we worked on the implementation and being here as a group, I wanted to feel safe in this crossroads. I have a child walking through these and cycling through these streets, and it's always a source of fear. This is my neighborhood. This was key. I had to feel that I was contributing and doing something about it. It's an open space where children walk about, and we wanted to get vehicles to speed down. This street also saw vehicles coming with a very little visibility. So we decided to plant some pots with trees and we use the technique, tactical urban planning method. That is something we hadn't do, done before. Yes, we want to contribute to the 11th SDG to make cities and communities more res resilient, safe, friendly, and safe. We wanted to boost capabilities in the municipality and get everybody excited about redesigning this city from our people, because a city can only be smart if it places people in the center. For the MOVES project, Tukaya allowed us to materialize uh, in a very specific is, action uh, plan. One of the main objectives of our project, which is promoting sustainable mobility and strengthening planning of mobility and planning of cities. The objective of this pilot project wasn't only to increase, to improve the mobility conditions for the neighbors living here, but a more broad goal in the long term to replicate these kinds of actions in other municipalities and cities of our country. Tukaya allowed us to prove that uh, sustainable mobility is very broad, but it starts by making cities available and accessible to people. The best part was experimenting and having citizens participate because in a collaborative manner, we made an intervent a tactical urban planning strategy that was very fast to implement. And this enhanced the mobility of bikers, pedestrians and other active transport means so that we can again assess this and replicate this in other parts of the country. Ciudad de la Costa has a very important role because of its infrastructure conditions. So it was that's why it was the chosen place to implement this project. We need to rethink cities differently in the future. We need to change the way we have designed cities so far and go away from a vehicle-centered strategy. Yes, we need to enhance the use of friendlier and more sustainable transport means. Today, we are here together to inaugurate this project, but this has to be a lesson learned. As an experience, it has been truly 
amazing and it should be replicated elsewhere. I am very happy, very happy that today I was able to, to participate, to be listened to, that I have been called on to materialize this idea in this very hard welcoming space so that we can reinvent our cities as public spaces. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much, Natalia. There are some questions that I would like to ask you. In fact, specifically by Diego Castro from, uh, from La Paz. He was asking if we could send him all the documents about this project. That's no problem. You've got it. But the specific question is, in the La Paz municipal government, they want to create tactical urbanism initiatives, but three ways to recover space on three ways to recover spaces that were before for cars and vehicles. So through the urban political urban department, we are looking at areas that can be potentially that can potentially be adapted to more sustainable means of transport. Where is the question? I'm looking for it it's down there. Oh, yes. So it's about. Yeah, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. Sorry, he was presenting his case, but at the end, he said there was a res an executive resolution approved by the mayor of the municipality. It was approved to create this intervention tool. And the name we chose was Spaces and Movement. And we also wanted to create parks. So we wanted to create interventions with a legislation that allows for these actions. So I wanted to ask you, did you define a methodology to allow for the prioritization of intervention areas? And what was the strategic framework, I'm talking about regional or national policies that allowed for these tactical urbanism actions? Well, the answer is that there's none of it. Actually, as the mayor was saying before, it's about learning. It's a learning process. In La Paz, they are way more advanced than us because what we have now is a pilot project and a tactical urbanism line that might trigger other processes in other places around the our department, a region, or other departments in, in, in the country. But I was sharing about Ciudad del Plata. In territorial ordinance plans, we do not have yet uh, this tool, at least it's, it hasn't been incorporated as a management and participation mechanism. I like the idea because at the end of the day, we want these things to be made tangible and materialize and be registered in documents. So yeah, I will ask this question in my department. So what we are doing, for instance, with the architect group, we've got a project with our universities and the Montevideo government. This is also an example of a process without a legal framework to prioritize. Prioritizing spaces is something that needs to happen in territorial ordinances. Because at the end of the day, each instrument, at least in Uruguay, yes, Act 18302 defines our territorial ordinances really well, but within the instrument system, we've got, yes, national strategies, department strategies, as I was saying, departments here are like regions or provinces, then sector plans and detailed plans. So in these planning processes that are way longer, 
that's where I believe we should, in a participatory way, create a programs and projects tree, so to speak. But they come up from different places, at least when we work on territorial ordinance projects and programs, it's really like a tree. You've got strategic lines, for instance, culture or sports. Back then, in our last mandate, we wanted to think about how do how can people practice different sports in our streets. I don't remember the name of the project. Anyway, it was we created accessible gyms, things like that. This was later coordinated with each municipality, and we prioritized the place, the location. But some things, sometimes it, it happens right the, the other way around, where the neighbors tell us, hey, we need a gym here. And they ask a, the sports and health project. And they ask for this to be included there. I don't think it's actually necessary to define more than we have. We've got a tool, and I believe that municipalities themselves and department governments, through their ordinance plan, ordinances, who define strategies for territories. But there's another topic, opportunities. Sometimes, and that's why plans are generally strategic plans subject to demands, sometimes elements align, and it just happens. For instance, if there's a topic that needs to be solved or if there's been a conflict between neighbors, this is an amazing tool so that we can act in a very fast, coordinated manner with participation to solve the said conflict. We also, in Montevideo, develop or are developing right now a squares program with the Society of Architects. I'm actually a counselor in this contest. We defined 10 locations where these squares should be placed. In each territory, they have different legal counsel. And what we wanted was to talk about interest points. We had 20 interest points, but we went one by one with the mayor. And we ended up choosing 10 out of these for public tender. So we need to be open to opportunities. We need to be open to creating these kinds of things. Sometimes they are on the agenda, but sometimes, unfortunately, they aren't. I'm sorry, Natalia, when you mentioned squares, you were actually saying pocket squares, but I've never heard this term before. Well, in Montevideo, we are working on small areas identified in neighborhoods, and sometimes they, they're remnant, for, for instance, uh, they are we're talking about uh, streets in a degraded area. And what we make them, what we do is we turn them into streets for pedestrians. But sometimes we're talking about small corners where we can't actually create a huge square. So that's what we mean by a pocket square. We turn these small spaces into squares that are just pleasant places to be small interventions around our city. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. They can be associated to tactical urban planning because these areas are created out of the blue. I mean, you can, before consolidating, you can test things out. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, Luis has some questions, but I've got a concern about this, which I find very interesting, precisely what you were just saying, Natalia. It's true that Uruguay soil land legislation is similar to the Spanish one, but you've provided us 
provided us with a key, something that doesn't come up in our legislation. And that's precisely that you have much more strategic planning than what we do here. General planning, which is much more binding. I believe that this is very interesting as a lesson to learn about the planning crisis we are living in Spain, that we put in so much detail that it would be very difficult in Spain to incorporate any kind of novelty, any change, because it's all included in the plan already. It's so close, so to speak, it would require periodic amendments. So you were describing it really well. It's very important. We've seen it in all the workshops, time, debt, Deadlines, terms are key. Time frames are key to avoid participatory fatigue. So as an interesting lesson learned, we could mention that defining plans in so much detail makes them so non flexible at all. So we end up stuck in the allegations stage. I hate this verb, but it doesn't allow us to test to experiment as citizens, we can't create the the square and experiment. Oh, well, actually, this is not working, this configuration. I can't walk here, I can't go there. So what an interesting lesson for us to learn. Uh, there are participatory processes that do not move forward because the plan doesn't allow us to. And it's a shame we don't provide this space for experimentation. I believe that this is something that we should think about in depth. Why does participation fail so often? Well, sometimes because structurally there's no legislation space or standard space. I'm sorry, because I always dwell on the legal, the law aspect of it. But when we want to be more spontaneous, it's very hard. As you were saying, it's just much more open minded and lively. It's more about going into getting to practice. Now let's link this with Luis's questions. Natalia, yo tenía dos preguntas muy sencillas. La primera sería, si ahora tuvieras que repetir eh, este mismo proyecto. Two questions, Natalia. If you had, uh, if you were to repeat the project, what would you change? And the second one is linked with this. So, knowing what you know about these projects, these interventions, um, what changes would you uh, would you make? to be successful. Thank you. OK, so what would I change? Um, well, there's something we are trying to work and I would like to work on it. And it is improving even more the measurements. So when we say this, one of the proposals we get is that well, let's put some cameras that will allow us to analyze the behavior before and after the proposal. And we didn't, we, we didn't manage to do this because of the timings, but it would be quite interesting for every project. So beyond the urbanism for every project in public spaces. So we've been working also with some companies and maybe film all of this have uh, yeah, yeah with cameras film all of this and say okay we've done in other in other places so where do women walk for example in a spa space women were uh, walking in the pavement in the mornings and then at night they would go in the middle of the street and um, we could measure that because we saw the women walking then bikes were just crossing in, in the middle of the street. So all of this has an explanation and this could create uh, then a transformation for projects, urban transformation. So um, I need more illumination here. Uh, here um, I need a cycling path here, I need this, I need that. So if we manage to measure all of this before and after, then for me, the project 
tiene más fortaleza todavía. Would be even stronger because all the things you see here now, we met them with a team. It was like uh, ten of us um, thinking. Well, I'm going to see the street. I'm going to analyze the pedestrians. You analyze the um, bikes, and so we can have a record of what's before and after. But it is true this is hard work. So we need to put technology to the service of all of this, and this could be really fundamental. And this is something I would change. So then, I think the other topic that's important is um, in what way could uh, could we integrate afterwards it's it's about the timing of participation so if it's uh, only little participation then they think they were um, invited to just validate an idea then if it's too big uh, then the ideas kind of get lost so this project was good because it was uh, very put uh, very well put in the timing and um, well we will see what would we have in the future but we can think about okay let's have more meetings to consolidate it in a project that's real and the other topic that uh, Luis was saying it was having a bigger equipment a better equipment uh, there were some things that we didn't get that on time for example maybe to put um, a, a touch screen where we can explain something here for them to see the experience so i think communication is very important and even if we're working with it quite well that's something that we are still missing i think in general in these projects we always uh, failing communication we're short of communication so people who didn't participate can still know about the project and the other thing that you were saying is um, yeah how, how to put into practice how to install it well with more and more people i think that in reality we've got a problem here it's a scaling problem and we need to create strong teams with this methodology i think that um, this is valid and is this is something that can be applied to more dense environments but we need a very powerful team to give an answer for all the people who should be participating we did some virtual workshops but the the ones that were performing more is the ones that were in the territory. So I I think that's experience that could be done in different cities or even in our cities, but maybe in other territories, in other areas. But obviously this also needs some political decisions because once this happens, the diagnosis is uh, participation participative sorry and as well as the co-design and the assessment so we need a strong commitment to put it into a bigger scale and not get lost in the meantime and always be focused on the objective on the goal but it can be done um, I'm not going to say urbanism and all of this, but we did some tests with the, the roundabouts. And the roundabouts, we, instead of just creating a final project, we had some, um, we tried to have put these roundabouts with just some signs and plans, etc., in a street. And once this worked, then we actually executed we put it in we implemented this roundabout so i think this is a great practice so maybe don't just jump into a great infrastructure without it being tested and here people participated in the solution so we could we could try this so this gives you kind of a guarantee if it worked or if it didn't so again it is possible but uh, we need to have a strong team and we need to have a some political support 
go beyond what's strategic and always be open to different solutions. When we think about this, um, well, I I talked to someone, they said, no, we already have the solution. And I was like, no, don't tell me. I don't want to know about it because the solution will come from the workshop. So it, it is about this. That for me, we need to really break with this culture that uh, we have got the solutions. We already know it, but it's, it's not really this. We need to be open uh, to other ideas that may arise, and this what's make uh, what makes it rich, actually. Absolutely, Natalia, thank you so much. Well, you brought us a topic that we really wanted to work on, and I think the example was absolutely brilliant. And like uh, Luis Vidal was saying in his comments, when even if you start from something small, then you can escalate and replicate with different experiences. And they might be simple experiences, but uh, they're not that much. They look simple, but they're not really. So when you have a good preparation and we need to think about everything that's behind it. On the other hand, I really like how even this was not prepared about uh, you gave us uh, a little um, insight of what's going to happen in the next workshop because you were uh, talking about technology and assessment and these are the next two workshops we will have in all the meetings we have in all these work meetings in the follow-up group we always have this mantra that is assessment 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 so all these processes if there's no feedback uh, like in your case i think it, that is just fantastic that you can replicate it and get that tactic guide regardless of the result and that's what we're going to be doing in the next workshop and then one after that one um about uh, the Victoria and it, it, which is about what you're speaking about it's a case and I'm, I'm already advertising it uh, because this is a participative process in which uh, we showed that real and physical participation and uh, technology are both needed and they need one another because obviously people cannot get to this participation in in this in some aspects that technology can actually get there can reach um but then there's something like well this corner was very important because it was this type of place or the the cars were parking here and these things can only be experimented in these uh, on-site workshops so i didn't see it before but uh, Natalia is one of the per, uh, people who attended our workshops, uh, one of the most. Uh, uh, so it is fantastic that you can tell us about it and continue working together. So it's been a real pleasure. It's been fantastic to hear you with your passion, but passion combined with technique. Uh, with technique. So um, I don't know if there are any other questions. As Luis said, all this workshop will be uploaded. You will be able to see them. And we will give you also the old documents, all everything that we've been using here. So they're at your disposal to use or, or for wherever you need them. Well, I don't know if there's any other questions, any other doubts. If anyone has got any doubts, um, now is the moment in case someone has anything left to say. Okay, well, again, I'm just going to write my email here. So if everyone needs, they can reach out to me. It's been great to be part of this process and being able to tell you about my experience today that uh, we feel really enthusiastic about. So, and you can replicate it in all, any of your countries in different scales. So you can keep on working. I'll give you some links as well here so you can download the guide the different guides. So yeah, I'm at your disposal. Uh, yes, uh, then we will send it to, uh, so you send it to Marta and then we put everything in the 
website so people can go to it. Sorry, I have a doubt. With all the colors you had, then what happens within time? Because I guess that's something recent. And I was just thinking about it, that it's so colorful, but maybe after the rain and after some time. So what happens there? Is it going to be painted again? Well, yes. Um, I think that's something that uh, I heard because of, you see, there's the, the degradation. This happens. And that is fundamental. So it doesn't end here. This has to continue and be transformed, maybe, because maybe what was painted, uh, then it will be painted in a different color, uh, or maybe it will be put somehow that it will be permanent. Um, so it, it changes. This is a temporary solution happening just for some time. Obviously, it's, it's very visual. It's uh, very beautiful to see and to to work this participation. But of course, this will need a transformation and it will be something permanent put on the wall, for example, maybe some cement or, or whatever. But this is the main function is not just painting it all the time, is getting to a final solution. Thank you so much. OK, so. I think we are super on time, uh, so we've already advertised the next uh, the workshop of this uh, TPG, and 11th of May, I think, we'll have some. Yes, so 11th May, we have got a working group. That's going to be very interesting because it's to go deeper in a workshop we had some months ago with the Jalisco government, and it was brilliant. And some of them asked us to go deeper into these assessments. And the 31st May, thanks to our colleagues from Buenos Aires, we will also have a, a project that's called Buenos Aires Bear Costa that uh, affecting the river of the Plata River. So. These are two workshops that will be very, very interesting. So we will, uh, that will be done those days. So put in your agendas. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. And good, uh, have a good morning to you, Natalia. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.